Are spirits happier if the place where they once lived hundreds of years ago is returned to that time in every aspect and detail? A manor house that's been lived in for over 700 years is bound to have its fair share of ghosts, and that certainly seems to be the case at Clinkcanic Var in South Wales. There, the house has been restored to its former glory, and the ghosts seem rather keen to make their presence felt. So what did happen to start people's suspicions? There are a couple of stories from the time uh, when the renovation began in the early 80s that uh, are quite intriguing. Many people believe many things, and I believe that when they took away the 20th century trappings and released the 17th century, that it houses released sounds that come out. That's my belief. From the moment they began restorations, strange things started happening. Now, there was a strip about uh, four foot and a half long by about three foot wide that just wouldn't take. Uh, it had to be replastered twice before it would stick. As the builders couldn't find an explanation for this, they referred it back to the council. What the surveyors have said is there's nothing wrong with the plaster mix, there's nothing wrong with the way it's been created, there's nothing been uh, missed when they've been uh, putting the plaster up. The only reason they can find the plaster work coming down is vibrations uh, occurring on the floor above. And the plaster work fell down overnight in a locked house with no one in it. And the area that came adrift was the area in which the footsteps had been heard coming from the floor above. So this was the beginning of the mysterious footsteps too. I hear these footsteps very regularly on many, many occasions. Only four of them are always going the same way. And actually, we're coming towards that door there. Um, real crisp. I would describe them as heavy military footsteps. That's the way I, the easiest way I can describe them. The four footsteps that Ed refers to followed the track of where the plasterwork fell. The council decided to run the museum as a living household, which could explain the ghost activity that appears here today. Steve, one of the staff, explains one incident during a tour. I've seen the reaction that some people have had to things in the house during ghost tours. Uh, for instance, a gentleman once in uh, Matty or Martha's chamber upstairs, uh, before I'd even said anything about the room, um, walked in and took his glasses off and started rubbing his eyes. And before I said anything else, he said, I'm sorry, I can't stay in this room whilst you're talking about it. I'll have to stand in the corridor a while. And so he stepped outside with his wife. And when I looked at him a bit closely, a bit more closely then, uh, tears were streaming down his cheeks and he seemed very upset. Despite these tears, most of the spiritual happenings, particularly in the room, are of a more light-hearted nature. We went upstairs to what's known as uh, Matty's room or Martha's room. And as we entered the room, the lady who was in the party said, what a wonderful perfume. And the other two of us couldn't smell anything. Someone in the party will smell the perfume, then someone a few feet away, then somebody else. And it's as if the scent has moved down the line. Um, it doesn't stay there, it doesn't hang in the air. It's the, it, it's the scent of somebody walking past. There has also been another experience involving Matty, the alleged former occupant of the upstairs room. A figure, a female figure, came from the fireplace dressed in um, housekeeper's costume. And he said that he had the sense that she was very, very much in charge, that he was intruding in her space there. One of the favourite things, it seems, is that you can make a comment about a ghost story or about a ghostly happening in the past and then all of a sudden things start to happen make it look as if the the ghosts are joining in. We were part way through the ground floor uh, in the kitchen and I happened to remark that not a lot seemed to be happening uh, whereupon there were three large thumps from the room ahead answered by another two from the room behind. This isn't the only instance when loud bangs have been heard. The tour leader, who was um, one of the stewards in the house, was discussing uh, uh, an incident that had happened in the colonel's study where the, the floor had started thumping and vibrating one evening. And uh, she banged her foot uh, upon the floor to, to make the sound. And we were downstairs from the, uh, the, the study at the time. And she was answered by three thudding footsteps from above. 
absolutely bang on cue. The footsteps are not the only evidence of ghostly activity. And the ghosts decided that night that they'd have a bit of fun. And they decided to, loo- to move cutlery from downstairs to upstairs and reverse, vice versa, from upstairs to downstairs. And this was continuing throughout the evening and converted into table. And uh, it's hinged and it falls back on itself. It was full, absolutely full of cups and saucers. And it stayed there for <clears throat> two or three hours. No problem. And all of a sudden, it just flipped up. And all the cups and saucers fell off. Um, no one near it. No one anywhere near it. So this particular spot was lived in continuously for 700 years. Basically, it's a happy place. It's a very domestic place. And I think in all that time, an awful lot of energy has probably rubbed off on it. Um, a lot of emotion, happy times have been had here. And um, I don't think it's surprising then if the building carries a certain resonance or it carries an attraction for spirits from, a, uh, from an earlier time. Uh, there's been a lot of life going to it. Clearly, a lot of life has gone on in the house, and most of it seems to have really rubbed off in the place. And now it's been restored to its former glory, the ghosts seem happier than ever to make themselves known. If anyone does want to move around the house from whatever period whatsoever, then fine. And we've got no intention of interfering with it. Um, they've obviously been in the house a lot longer than we have. Therefore, they, uh, they've got more say in, in where they want to go and 